Mr. Benjamin Sobey, Managing Director, JPEC uh, Talk Walker, on how can brands beat COVID in contactless world? I'm sure a lot of questions erupting and wanting to know how can brands beat COVID in contactless world? So please tune in and send in your questions as well. Don't forget to use our hashtag, which is India Brand Conclave, while I invite Benjamin on the screen. A very warm welcome to you. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Katie. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be with you uh, with you today. So my name is Ben, um, and I lead the Tokoker Asia Pacific and Japan team. Uh, I'm really excited to be with you. I've heard already some great uh, some great content and some great speakers. So I'll be speaking to you for the next 20 minutes uh, or so on a very current, very relevant topic. It's how can brands beat the current contactless world that we're living in. Right. Uh, so first, I'll give you a quick introduction into Tokoker, who we are, what we do. Uh, and then we'll look at the COVID situation in the last 30 days. Um, that way we look at Sorry recent to, uh, relevant information. Interrupt you here, Benjamin. Uh, we yeah. can't see your screen yet. So if you can um, put your PPT in the full screen mode. Um, so yeah, so uh, as I was saying, I'll first give a quick intro about Talk Worker. Uh, we'll look at the COVID situation over the last 30 days in India. Um, that way it stays relevant. Uh, and then we'll look at very nice example of brands uh, and what they've done right uh, over the last couple of weeks and couple of months um, to then look at some industry uh, insights before leaving you with some, uh, some key takeaways. Uh, so a little bit about myself first. So I'm in Singapore, hence the mask, right? I'm in the office and this is compulsory. Um, this is our regional headquarter. Um, this is where uh, I'm talking to you from today. Uh, I've been in the region for two years now, uh, and I came here after living in different countries in Europe uh, and also a short stint in the US. So even prior to talk worker uh, in companies such as TBWA, Gartner, I've always been a believer of research, a believer of data, but particularly how powerful data insights can fuel growth of businesses, right? How can it drive innovation and bottom line customer excellence, which we're all looking for. Um, and this is especially true in the current situation. So for those of you who haven't heard about Tokoker uh, uh, before, we're a listing analytics company. Um, and what we do is that we empower leading brands and agencies uh, to optimize the impact of their marketing, their communication, and their mar consumer insight strategies. So we have seven offices worldwide now, uh, Singapore and Tokyo for the region, uh, two in America and three in Europe. Uh, we're close to 400 people now globally, uh, with a third of them being engineers and data scientists. And we've also been very recently um, named a leader uh, in our field. Um, and so our conversational intelligence platforms, uh, what does it do? So it provides solutions that help to protect, that help to measure and promote brands worldwide, and doing so by leveraging AI across media, across customer, across consumer, and also market data. So without further ado, we can, uh, we can jump right into it. This is what, uh, again, what we'll, cover, uh, what we'll cover today. So first of all, yeah, 2020 in nutshell, I think I represented quite well. Um, it has been completely uh, different from everybody, from what everybody expected, you know, completely surreal. Uh, we've been living uh, with this virus for here at least almost a year now. Um, the world has come to a standstill, uh, people no longer greet each other the same way. We don't hug each other. And there's generally, you know, kind of a, in the air, a, a kind of a reservation when people meet. Uh, but amidst all of this chaos, uh, brands are trying their best, I think, to really make the most of the situation. Uh, some get it right, uh, some a bit less. Um, but the key thing here is to really to remember that people are a bit scared, are a bit concerned. And we'll see later how brands that are addressing this fear are taking steps in the right uh, direction, right? Some good news lately, right? Uh, we saw recently the Zendin light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, both Pfizer, Moderna, and also AstraZeneca have come up with potential contenders for the vaccine, right? So that can really turn things around for a lot of us worldwide. So 2020 should be a good year. Uh, and we've also seen, uh, I think yesterday, that Pfizer was actually approved in the UK um, I think yesterday, uh, yesterday. All right. But before we do get to the vaccine, right, let's take a look at what people have been talking about. Um, and this is data that coming from India only, right? When it comes to the coronavirus, 
So what do we see here? We see that the current of conversations around COVID have risen again and drastically 800% more versus the previous 30 days. So just 30 days before, right? Um, and so here you see some peak, right? Well, the peak at the beginning, so on the left of your screen, comes from the promise of free vaccination uh, that was discussed at a state level election. Right. Uh, then we also, see a lot, uh, we also see a lot of chatter about the COVID situation in Delhi uh, and various promises from the government uh, to work with the Joe Biden administration on controlling the virus globally. Right. There's, however, lately been a drop in mention, a drop in engagement uh, in the last weeks. Well, clearly India, you know, and, and, and all of you, you know, were busy over the last, uh, of last few weeks with uh, festivals uh, and, of course, Diwali. However, the interest in COVID-related conversation remains much higher as compared to the song. But who's doing the talk, right? So here, very briefly, this is, you know, the, a, a bit of insight about the demographic, who's, who's behind all those conversations in India. So we see that it comes mainly from these states and union state territories, right? So, well, Delhi has the lion's share. This is not really surprising. The PMO is located there. Uh, and most announcements, uh, as well as health and safety measures, are also coming from uh, from there. Demographic also show uh, that millennials uh, are are leading the chatter, following by Gen Z. And so, with all those conversations, where do brands fit in? Okay, again, data from the last thirty days uh, only. So this is a word cloud, right? Which discusses, highlights the main brands that are being spoken about in conjunction. Uh, with the coronavirus lately. So we can prominently say, uh, see Pfizer, we see AstraZeneca and even Sputnik, because I believe there's a trial of that, uh, of that one you know, in India uh, running at the moment. This comes as no surprise, of course, to see those brands or those names, uh, given all the potential exciting news that we've seen in the last days. Right. Uh, we also see a lot of social. So we see Twitter, we see WhatsApp, we see Facebook. Well. Why? Well, this is mainly because they serve as channels of distribution and communication, right? Uh, we also see Amazon too. E-commerce and deliveries, of course, you know, have been part in all our lives now, much, much more than they ever were, and maybe that we expected them to be that fast, right? We also see organizations such as WHO, the IMF, and so on, are also part of that chapter. But so what are some brands in those team clouds uh, above doing differently? Why are they more mentioned than others? We already highlighted some reason for a, a few of them. Uh, and how more importantly, how should brands, how should all of us proceed from here? So let's dig into some, um, some examples. So here, going contactless, uh, one of the major innovation that brands uh, especially the, those in the hugely popular food and beverage industry, right, are moving towards. They didn't have the choice. It was a fight for survival for most of the FNB organizations across the world, right? So going contactless is not a new concept, right? Uh, but the coronavirus was really the catalyst for it to become mainstream. And one of the brands that does it right and got it right is Zomato. So how does it work? Well, contactless menu, so that's of course quite straightforward. You simply need to scan a QR code uh, when you enter a restaurant to explore the menu. Then you also order contactlessly. You order through the app. You don't need to talk to the wasting staff to place an order, but also to modify that order. And then contactless payment. You merely need to make a payment after your meal on the Zomato app. So simple innovation, but still that took a lot of effort, you know, in the back end to make it work well and in a timely fashion. Uh, but this has greatly reduced contact between patrons, between staff at restaurants, right? Zomato introduced this not only in India, actually, but in several other countries. Um, additionally, some competitors like Dineout, Swiggy, among others, have been more, have been also moving towards this um, steadily, and we expect more. But so what are they doing right? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, they're focusing on safety. They're focusing on reassurance of all of us and also of the government agencies. Both of these are absolutely key um, at the moment. Everyone is a bit skeptical about stepping out, going out, meeting people, but going contactless actually counters the risk um, of all this. And so not only are brands like Dynot or Zomato talking about safety measures and spreading awareness, 
they're also demonstrating their commitment towards this by actively innovating and having King Plar clear plans ahead to continue this innovation path. Another example was very popular uh, lately of brands adapting to this new normal is the IPA, right? And how it was run this year. I think we've seen great example of um, sport organization, different leagues across the world that completely shifted. We have the NBA, you know, for example, in their bubble in Florida. Um, but the IPL is another great example, right? So it was played in empty stadiums in UAE. Okay, we can be all disappointed not being able to see, but at least we can watch games and see the season to a closure. Um, and so no crowd, of course, for safety reasons. But so what does it mean for sponsors? You know, if you're sponsor one of the team, if you're sponsoring you know, one of the stadium, what does it mean for you? And so the sponsors really needed to innovate. They really needed to make a difference uh, in order to make a mark this year. The key then being sponsoring smart, right? What could they do? What could they change in order to generate ROI for the marketing dollars within a very much more restricted environment? And so I personally liked how Delhi Capitals handled it, right? So they were sponsored by uh, JSW, which is a B2B company. However, when we ran a quick search uh, that you can see here within the tool, I noticed that the sponsorship chatter for them was among the highest. Um, and that's even though they didn't win the championship, right? And this is simply because the team was smart. And what did they do? Well, they focused on increasing engagement and innovation this year and less on the glitz, less on the glamour, right? They also had an initiative supporting local small businesses called Vocal for Local, extremely popular across the, the population. They also had also a, an official hygiene partner um, on field, Living Guard, um, really doing their share uh, in order to raise awareness about COVID. And I also recall reading an article recently uh, about them, about the Delhi Capitals, where it was mentioned that they managed not to only match, but also exceed their revenue from 2019 yeah. to this year. I think that's quite commendable uh, given the circumstances. Another example of smart sponsorship, uh, this time comes from RCB, right? So looking at pure mention of teams, uh, we notice here that RCB is right on top. Uh, okay, the difference between them and Mumbai Indians is very small. Uh, there's no mean feat, considering that Mumbai Indians were the champion this time around. That said, RCB still remained the team that is the most mentioned. And so why is that? Well. By looking more into the data, we notice that the main reason for that is that the skipper for this team is none other than Captain Cold, but also a very important initiative. Initiatives like the Go Green program for the team has kept things interesting. So let's, allow, let's have a look at what they've done. So you'll see, this video is a pretty simple one uh, where you can see the different players wearing their green jersey. Uh, but you, it shows them supporting their Going Green initiatives. It's pretty simple in principle, but managed to be a big hit clearly.
All right. So you see, I think it was great relating also to, you know, to personal experiences, what's happening in South Africa, connecting it to, you know, issues also here. Um, hugely popular. Uh, and I think we can all see why. Now, another really great ad. Uh, we won't look at this one, you know, but I still wanted to uh, to mention it. Um, it comes um, it comes from um, a campaign around, around Diwali, right? Uh, and how our brand really uh, adapted uh, based on the festive season in India. So this is normally traditionally the time, right, where they have the highest ad spends and the biggest budget. Of course, it was very different this year. Um, economic crisis, social distance, precautions, you know, have completely changed how we look at festival this year, and so they adapted. And so there's one in particular uh, that managed to make a mark, so it's ferns and petals. Uh, and here in the picture, um, it, dis it depicts, you know, Diwali at home uh, and the various advantages uh, that it brings, including also your pets having a quiet and more peaceful time. So it also talks about the importance of following the norm. Um, and even while sending the value gift. So I really recommend uh, all of you to, to watch it again if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen it. Another great one, uh, this one will be, uh, will be watching, uh, comes from Cadbury, right? So they really talk about the importance of supporting small, of supporting local businesses while picking Diwali presents, right? So let's take a look at this uh, Diwali ad creative. All right, so very simple message, but extremely sweet, you know, extremely well filmed, uh, great music and message, right? So what did those two uh, brands, um, what did they do right, right? So they really highlight the importance of not giving up on social distancing and following the rule, right? Extremely important. But they also highlight the importance of supporting local businesses during their time of need. And so before, uh, for the end of my, uh, my session, um, I'll just focus on some industry insights uh, and how things are at a global uh, global level. So one industry uh, that has really flourished during COVID is the education tech industry, right? Schools and, college and colleges have closed down uh, because they're major hotspots for the spread of COVID. Uh, but the show must go on for all of them. Um, and so e-learning has become mainstream, right? So using looking at this cluster, which basically um, puts um, content according to the semantic similarity together and clusters them, which is what you see here, um, we can see what people are interested in when it comes to webinars in general. So people are looking at health information as well as webinars where doctors discuss best practices on safety. We also see that people are looking at climate change, public policy, and more around this. And online classes on e-learning in general, as mentioned before, are also extremely prominent too. So if you're in digital marketing, the ethic field now is clearly one where you can reach new audiences at the moment. If you look at e-commerce now, of course, extremely grounded. Here we'll look very just briefly before COVID, so pre-COVID. And so here, you know, it's a look, you know, about what the conversation was uh, around e-commerce before COVID. And what we see, it's mainly about what people were buying the prices, offers, the different platform, online shopping, or mention about some ads. So, so quite typical um, content, right, that is highlighted here. Um, now, afterwards, if we see during COVID, right, so we're looking at February to June, so really in the middle of the worst, uh, one of the worst moments, um, we're looking at, you know, 
uh, what people and how the, the needs and their conversation change, right? And it's really about their everyday essentials. So we're talking about purchasing essential goods, uh, getting supply, getting demand over COVID, but as well as different payment options uh, and how maybe to get uh, the supply that we all needed in the best possible way and in the safest possible way. On the flip side, we also see uh, that people started talking about delayed delivery. Right. And uh, finally, uh, just e-commerce, you know, after, so this is post-June. And so what do we see here? Well, it talks about ads a lot. It talks about a, a lot of customer service. Make in India, you see product from India, or make in India, extremely relevant, extremely important now. We feel that we felt that that sentiment of really buying something that comes from next door, that comes from a local or maybe our country, right? And this is extremely prominent, but also, yes, supporting small businesses. And you see how the conversation evolved, you know, in six to seven months and what it is now uh, about, right? And so with that, you know, it's the end of my talk. Uh, but just before I let you go, uh, I've put together some, uh, some main key points, some main key takeaways that brands can use. So, it's really about trust, it's about reassurance, and this is clearly key, and we've seen how, you know. So that needs to be the central principle behind every communication strategy. Uh, the more people trust you, the more the brand love you're creating. And when things go back to normal, your brand will be potentially the first brand they think of. Right? Then the world is a polarized place at the moment, right? Potentially even more than it was 10 to 15 months ago. It's been months and months of living with COVID, social distancing, uh, tense political climates, and stressful economic times have brought down people's threshold level, right? And so it's extremely important not to think once, not to think twice, but multiple times before creating an ad film so that it sends across the right message to the audience. And then don't add to the noise. Unless you have something extremely valuable to say, well, just don't say it. Right. Being sensitive at the moment is extremely key. And mostly people aren't that interested in talking about new product releases or blog posts unless it helps with the current situation. It's also important to remember the current context and make that a part of your messaging wherever possible. And we've seen that great example coming from the Delhi Capitals, right, who had an hygiene and safety partner on the field. Right. It was simple, yet extremely effective. And lastly, optimism is, a great, optimism is a great theme. Everyone needs a little bit of it right now and in the coming weeks and months. And with that, thank you very much for attending my sessions. And I'll be happy to take some questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Benjamin. That was really an insightful session. And the last slide kind of summed it up completely for us. Uh, unfortunately, we are running short on time, so we can't take audience questions right now. But we would definitely like to thank you for your time and spending this uh, key insights with us. Thank you so much, Benjamin. Thank you very much, Katie. Have a good day.